I'm just getting ready for spring at the wildlife homestead, and for today that means setting up a few nest boxes. For many species of bird, cavity nesters in particular, there's an increasing shortage of ideal nesting habitat. But here's the cool thing, we could help. Installing a nest box in our yards, our farms, our orchards, parks, or even our workplace or church provides a safe place for native birds to raise their young. These are simple projects that we can even do with our children. And in return, we can relish in being a good human, spending quality time with our friends and family while working on a tangible conservation effort, one that they'll be sure to remember, and enjoy the added benefit of more wildlife right outside our doors. Today, I'll show you why nest boxes are essential for birds and what features make a good one and where to place them to give birds the best chance of nesting success. Whether you're looking to support bluebirds, chickadees, nuthatches, or some other species, I'll cover everything you need to know to set up your nest box the right way. Not all birds are cavity nesters. However, the birds we're trying to attract to our yards with nest boxes are. Many cavity nesting birds rely on the natural holes in trees, but due to habitat loss, these spaces are disappearing. Human development in urban and suburban areas has reduced the number of natural tree cavities, as has changing land use practices in rural areas. Dead trees are often removed, eliminating natural nesting sites, and competition from non-native species, like European starlings and house sparrows, makes it even harder for native birds to find a safe place to nest. By installing a properly designed birdhouse, you can help support local native bird populations, and even contribute to their conservation efforts as a whole. Not all birdhouses are created equal, so whether you're purchasing one in a store or building your own, you want to ensure you're following these best practices. Before doing anything, you should first decide what species you want to target for your specific area, as this will dictate everything from your box design, hole dimensions, height for placement, and direction of placement. Luckily, Cornell's Nest Watch website has some handy tools for deciphering all this for your specific location. as well as some free building plans. They also use Woodworking for Wildlife as a template. All right, first thing first, spend some time in your yard observing species that occur in your area and decide what you're targeting. Bluebirds and wrens are popular species for nest boxes. Once you have that decided, a good nest box should have the right entrance hole size to allow native birds in while keeping larger, aggressive species out. And while perches might seem cute and a nice touch, they actually make it easier for predators to access the nest, so omit these from your plans. Proper ventilation and drainage are also crucial, as small holes near the top allow airflow in, while drainage holes at the bottom keep the interior dry. Safe materials are also important. Untreated wood is best, while metal and plastic can cause overheating. If building your own nest box, cedar fence boards are a popular choice for their cost, resistance to rot, and safety for birds. Additionally, a good nest box should have an easy to open panel for cleaning between nesting seasons. Just like your feeders need to be cleaned, so too will your nest boxes. If you're finding this video helpful so far, please be sure to like it and share it with a fellow bird brain. This simple action helps our channel out an awful lot and might encourage others to install their very own nest box resulting in even bigger positive impacts for native birds. As a thanks for doing so, check out these cute little nesting birds. Where you place your nest box can determine whether birds will actually use it or not. Different species prefer different heights, with bluebirds typically nesting from 5 to 10 feet off the ground, chickadees and nuthatches preferring 5 to 15 feet, and owls often nesting between 10 and 30 feet up, if not higher. The entrance hole should generally face east or southeast in most areas to take advantage of the morning sun be more shaded in the afternoon heat, and directioned away from the prevailing winds. Spacing is also important as some birds, like bluebirds, can be territorial and need at least 50 to 100 feet between boxes. Nest boxes can be mounted on trees, poles, or fences, but it's important to choose a location that minimizes the risk of predation like from raccoons and snakes reaching into the nest. So if this is a concern, maybe consider a pole mount with a baffle. But remember, we're trying to mimic nature here, so err on the side of action and get those nest boxes up. Installing nest boxes benefits both birds and people. By providing safe nesting sites, you're directly supporting native bird populations, helping them raise the next generation. 
Many cavity nesting birds also play a role in natural pest control by eating insects. And watching these birds build the nest, lay the eggs, and raise their young is a rewarding experience that connects us with nature. Whether in your backyard or a community space, you can even take it a step further by monitoring your nest box and contributing data to citizen science projects like NestWatch. Installing nest box is one of the easiest and most rewarding ways to support native birds. Whether you buy one or build your own, setting it up correctly ensures birds will actually use it. Now, I want to hear from you. Do you already have a nest box out? Are you thinking about putting one up? Let us know in the comments below, and we'll see you the next time.